Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So, as we discussed in the all builds, runes, and spells guide, that I'll be making a Ezreal supplementary guide on Frozen Gauntlet Ezreal. So here we have it. This is the supplementary guide for Frozen Gauntlet Ezreal. So as I discussed, Ezreal has um, pretty much three builds, aside from the AP one. So basically, the Frozen Gauntlet here can be replaced by Divine Sunderer or Triforce, um, depending on the situation. But generally, 80% of games, the default best build is going to be Triforce. So anyways, uh, first up, before I discuss the build itself, I'm going to discuss when you really want to pick um, this build. So basically, there is the scenario you want to pick this build is firstly, the enemy team has a lot of AD damage because obviously the Frozen Gauntlet gives you uh, gives you armor, uh, 50 armor at that, so you want to be picking it against a pretty um, AD heavy team, at least 4 AD champions in my opinion, if not one of the other options are definitely going to be better. And secondly, you want to try to pick this against a team with low range and, and, and or is very kiteable, because this will give you the slow, and the slow will make it such that it's really hard to reach you, especially if you combine it with the Serelda's Grudge for a double slow. So anyways, we're going to go through the build real quick. Nothing too complicated. First up, we go for the Mana Mune. Of course, Mana Mune is a, pretty much the best item for Ezreal, where it gives him a lot of you know mana ability haste, and after you stack it, full evolves into the Mirror Mana, which does trigger um, extra damage on hit on his Q, because his Q does proc uh, on hit effects. So uh, Mana Mune is there. Then we go for the Frozen Gauntlet, which gives you the armor that we described earlier. It gives you even more mana, which actually does convert to even more damage, because mana is of course going to get converted to damage due to the uh, Mirror Mana. And then you get even more ability haste, so you can spam your spells a ton. And of course you get the Spellblade passive, where you know when you Q or when you auto after using an ability, you will create that icy feel which slows people. Now of course you don't build any more armor in this build until you get to the GA, so the, the zone is going to be pretty small at the beginning, but if you manage to reach all the way to the to, to late game, I guess the, the slow range you know, will be significantly bigger. Now next for the boots. Honestly, on Ezreal, I normally go for the Gluttonous Greaves. Now, the reason why I do this is because Ezreal doesn't really have a whole lot of lifesteal until you reach the Blade of the Rune King. So, sometimes it takes a long time to reach there, so I just like getting in some early lifesteal first. Of course, Hunter Vampirism does give you some if you choose to go for that. We'll get into that when we go into the runes, but I just like to go for Gluttonous Greaves. Of course, defensive uh, boots are an option as well. Uh, for the enchant, generally you go for stasis almost all of the time. QSS in uh, other instances, but those are quite rare. Then for me personally, I like to go for Sor Serelda's Grudge with a double slow. Now basically between Serelda's Grudge and um, Mortal Reminder, Serelda's Grudge is basically almost always a better uh, option unless the enemy team has a lot a lot of healing but even so generally you can rely on your team to build like bramble vest or oblivion or now if you really have to build um, grievous wounds for yourself you can replace serelda's grudge with mortal reminder particularly in this build because you already have slows from the frozen gauntlet or iceborne gauntlet i guess i could say yep iceborne gauntlet <laughs> Um, so you don't really need Serelda's Grudge as much in this build as in his other builds, but I, I just like getting the double slow, like slowing from the icy passive on on the Serelda's Grudge combined with the, the slow area on the Iceborn Gauntlet. Basically, it's almost as good as a root, like the enemies can barely move. Anyways, afterward you go for Blade of the Rune King. Uh, of course, for the attack speed, the damage, you know, the lifesteal mainly, it's mainly for the lifesteal, and of course all the other good stuff in the passive as well. And finally, you end off with a GA for, you know, the, the revive passive mainly. And if it is down, you can always opt into something like a more of Malmodius if you need more defensive options or something like that. Now, for the runes, obviously, Conqueror is obviously the best option. You stack it up relatively easily and ramps up your damage when it's at full stacks. For Domination, you actually have a couple of options. Now, Hunter Vampirism is more or less the safest um, option because you do get um, lifesteal out of that. Another option is Brutal. Uh, some people like to go Brutal for more poke in the early game because Ezreal is a uh, very pokey champion in the laning phase and not too many champions can contest with his poke because most champions have lower uh, range than his poke. Of course, if you're against something like a Caitlyn, that's a different story, but if you're against like a Lucian, Kai'Sa, or Vayne, uh, you're going to be poking them really, really easily. Uh, so Brutal in the laning phase would be beneficial. 
Now, for this particular build, weakness actually does make quite a bit of sense because uh, you get your slows really early uh, in terms of going for the Iceborne Gauntlet. So, um, weakness could possibly make sense, but personally, I just like going for Hunter Vampirism myself. Now, Champion, as I highlighted in my Ezreal Company Gets, is always an option as well because Ezreal is a relatively safe champion, but I realized that, especially on Ezreal, there are some instances in certain games where you start off the game like just not too good so I don't really recommend going for champion on, on Ezreal um, so yeah I don't go for that personally now for the resolve route it's between Hunter Titan bone plating as well as adaptive carapace depending on what you want uh, adaptive carapace not too good in Ezreal because his laning is not his main strength he needs to get to about three items to actually you know be strong so I would recommend Hunter Titan or bone plating depending on whether there is more CC or burst on the enemy team now for the last one, I actually like to go for Sweet Tomb. Now the reason for that is although Ezreal can benefit from Mana Flow Ban and Hunter Genius, personally I feel that Hunter Genius, you don't need that much CDR. You already get a lot of CDR from your items. And Mana Flow Ban, same deal. You already get more than enough mana from your items. So I don't think you actually need to get all of those. I think it's a little bit of overkill. So I personally not just take Sweet Tooth because they're is no better option and for the spells as usual of course it's going to be flash and it's going to be exhaust of course you can opt into barrier instead of exhaust if you so prefer so with that out of the way we can move on into the gameplay all right so now we're going to take a look at the gameplay itself so i don't think i quite mentioned this at the start of the video uh, i did mention when you want to pick it but i didn't really mention the drawback so the main drawback of this build i think is relatively obvious which is the fact that you now become a lot more utility and a lot less um, damage so essentially in a way you become a little bit like a uh, safer Ash with mobility now Ash of course has her volley which can hit on multiple targets well as you can only hit um, 1Q which does actually create an area of effect slow so that you know kind of makes up for it a bit but your damage you will feel that you are doing a lot less damage now you will see that uh, after I get like into Two items plus, like uh, this is actually the first match I'm playing Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal, uh, because I don't really like it. Basically, I, I feel that if you want to pick, you know, Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal, there, you know, I I just basically don't think there's a better option. Like I, I don't think I'd rather pick Ash than Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal, but I think that instead of going for utility, I'd rather go for um, actual damage because I you know, I'm the ADC after all, but. Anyways, yeah, so main issue is that you really feel like you have no damage because the Iceburn Gauntlet doesn't actually really give you any raw damage. The, the part that gives you the damage is the Spellblade passive itself and also the mana which is going to convert to damage um, when you get the, the mana mean. So um, no actual physical damage, stat, attack, speed, crit or anything like that. So that is sort of an issue uh, in my opinion. So here in the laning phase, you guys can see we're up against a Senna and a Vayne. So if we play this lane correctly, they should almost never be able to reach us because me and Seraphine can outrange them with our poke. So here Seraphine is just trying to land Qs onto them and likewise, I'm trying to land Qs onto them as well, Ws if I can. Um, basically, Vayne is really short range so she shouldn't be able to get to me unless she tumbles forward to auto attack, in which case she should be eating a Q for her efforts. Senna, uh, her range at the moment cannot reach me as well. The only thing that can really reach me is as you guys saw that root. Um, so I do have to look out for that, but aside from that, we should be able to relatively easily um, just poke them down. Alright, so here we're going to discuss about picking Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal in this particular match. So now, as you guys can see, the enemy team is full AD except for a Vagar, and also the enemy team has relatively low range. In the sense that Vayne, low range, Senna, low range at least at the earlier stages of the game, and... Fiora is relatively low range, but she does have a dash, um, which kind of increases her threat bubble a little bit. And Ramus, you know, he's melee, but he does have that, you know, the roll to, to get near you, which does increase his threat as well. But by and large, uh, as long as, you know, Fiora does or I can't really say Fiora doesn't have lunge, because Fiora's lunge comes up really fast, but as long as Ramus doesn't roll into you, and you don't get too late game where Senna and Vega become a problem, this is a perfect match to pick um, Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal. Furthermore, as I mentioned, you will have quite a lack of damage from um, Ezreal. So I do have like other damage carries in my team like Master Yi um, to actually make up for my lack of physical damage. 
So now as you can see on my first back, same deal as normal as real. On your first back, you normally start out with a longsword at level 1. And on your first back, you try to pick up a tier and a she. Now of course if you cannot, if you don't have enough gold to pick up both, just pick up the tier. And then you can pick up the sheen later on. But basically these are your two priority items. Tier so you can start stacking the tier. And sheen so that you at least have some damage in the laning phase. Because sheen really helps when you launch your... Uh, cues into the enemy to actually deal uh, a lot of extra damage onto them. So here really nice uh, route by the Seraphine. We managed to finish out the vein and because Senna flashed early, a uh, really good preemptive flash by Senna, she actually does manage to escape. So here Yi just comes, clears up my minion wave and the dragon is spawning but instead we're gonna actually go for the tower. So here we actually can chase Senna down if she tries you know, anything funny but nothing too much uh, happens there. So here we're just going to uh, just take down take some tower plates. Now unfortunately I miss out on the second tower plate because I was walking over to the dragon because I thought that we were only going for one, but turns out we are going for two. Now enemy team obviously is back in the lane and we actually managed to get the tower relatively low. Ramus does show up to the party and here we have the cloud dragon which in my opinion is the most important dragon. Now of course it's not going to be sticking around for too much longer. But here, um, basically, the Master Yi gets himself caught, so that is going to be a huge problem in terms of trying to contest the Cloud Dragon. Alright, but somehow the enemy team looks like they're not actually doing the Cloud Dragon. They seem more interested in us like pushing out the lane or in fighting us, so that is uh, pretty good for us in this instance, because if they just started out the Cloud Dragon, pretty much it, w it would have been free, <laughs> in my opinion. So here we're just going to clear out the minion wave. Ezreal, as usual, we know his main weakness. He doesn't really have very good wave clear, so he clears wave really slow. Thankfully, Vayne is also a relatively slow uh, wave clearer, so that is good. Now here they actually run into a fight with um, Lux, uh, as well as Master Yi, who has already respawned because it's still pretty early in the game. I launch my ult down to help out with doing a little bit of damage, but we do actually manage to... Uh, kill both Ramus and Vagar. So basically this means it's a free dragon for us. So the enemy team, uh, a little bit of the wrong decision making there, chose to go for us slash push the lane instead of going for the dragon. Now this leads us to basically pick up a free dragon instead, where the roles are reversed. <laughs> Alright, so here, obviously we are interested in taking down this tower if we can do so before the enemy team comes back to the lane, because it is really low and we have a very good chance of taking down first tower. Alright, so unfortunately the enemy team is back in the lane, so we can't exactly just force down the first sound. Now here, if you guys can see, I make a major mistake, because Vayne is running down the Seraphine, and I didn't realize she was going to do so much damage. Uh, because I, I, in my opinion, I, I was thinking like, Vayne has one Storm Razor, she does do some damage, but we should be able to get out without having to expend anything. Oh, that was my messages, sorry about that. So... Um, I thought we could, we should be able to get out easily without explaining anything. So in the end, when I realized Seraphine was going to die, I did pop the exhaust, but that was way too late. So that is a lose-lose situation where Seraphine still dies and I had to blow my exhaust. Now, had I made the correct decision at the beginning, the best case scenario was I exhaust Vayne at the very beginning. Now, if I already chose not to exhaust the Vayne in the very beginning, uh, I should have just not exhausted her at all because we, Seraphine was going to die whether I exhausted her or not. So basically it's a series of bad decisions, or rather not a series, but two back-to-back -back decisions uh, where basically I end up both losing my Seraphine and also losing my exhaust. So that's very um, not ideal of a scenario for me. But yeah, so of course we can learn from that mistake and I will be learning from that mistake as well. So here we managed to do indeed pick up the first tower of the game. We also managed to pick up the mana mune, so we, we want to of course charge up the mana mune as fast as we can. Thankfully Ezreal in my opinion is the best champion, easiest champion to uh, charge up the mana mune on because he spams so much spells, especially his like Q's and W's, like they're on really low cooldown and he spams them so much that it's really easy to actually just spam, um, um, charge up the mana mune with the spamming of the spells. Now here we, uh, Seraphine hits a really nice ult which allows me to combo my ult together on top of it. And here, basically, uh, we have a very unfortunate situation where Ramus escapes with 1 HP. Vega is also escaping with 1 HP. Managed to finish on the Vayne though. And here actually, I was so concentrating on looking at the Vega and his health that I didn't actually notice the tower is 88 health. Now what I could have done here is I simply walk into tower range, auto attack the tower once or twice to kill it, and I actually could have chased the Vega or helped, helped in the fight. Uh, but thankfully the Lux does manage to snipe the Vagar from the base. Uh, but 
Actually, we could have taken down that tower way earlier on in the fight, and the fight would have been way easier. Now, it turns out that at the end, I believe my team does come out on top. However, you know, it could have been a lot uh, easier of an experience if we actually chose to take out the tower before we actually do anything else. But yeah, I think all of us in the team was just too concentrated on the fight and didn't quite notice that the tower was that low. I only really noticed the tower was low when I looked at the replay, which kind of feels bad, but you know, it is what it is. Either way, we managed to back and we actually managed to pick up the, the Frozen Gauntlet. Now, in this particular game, I chose to actually, instead of going for the um, the Gluttonous Greaves, I chose to actually go for Armor Boots now. Of course, first off, because the enemy team does have a lot of armor. And secondly, of course, because it does combo with the Frozen Gauntlet as well to get a bigger slow range. So I did choose to go for that in this particular game because I didn't feel like the lifesteal in this particular game was as important at this stage in the game at least. Now there's certain games where you are in many many skirmishes and the lifesteal is gonna make or break whether you win the fight or not but this is not one of them. So here I see you know a fight at the breaking at the top lane. Just look uh, how the slow is uh, uh, um, causing Fiora to not be able to escape allowing Master Yi to catch up and get into the tower, get under the tower sorry to actually finish off the kill. Now here I'm pushing in the wave so we can possibly try to dive the Senna um, I'm trying to just do whatever damage I can. The entire rest of the enemy team shows up, so it's time for us to back off. And yeah, so here we're just clearing out the minion wave before backing. Vega's trying to back. Vega does actually manage to back. Now the Senna and Ram is still in the area, but regardless, we can just get the tower re really easily. So no big uh, issues there. Rift Herald is coming up and Dragon is already up. Now, Dragon has been up for, for a while now, but everybody is in the top side, including the Ramus uh, as, as well as the Master Yi. Master Yi did manage to recall and he's pinging for Dragon, I believe. But since we're all in the top lane, we should just go for Rift Herald. So here, as you can see, he's picking for Dragon, but we're, we're, three of us are in the top lane, so why not just go for the Rift Herald instead? Only Lux is at the Dragon, and, we, and we, it would take time for us to rotate, so picking up the Rift Herald would just be a lot um, easier since we're all already in the area. Of course, running over the wall to see if there's any enemies coming by, and popping that Blast plan to make sure no enemies can get into the pit easily. And so here, we pick up the Rift Herald already, and we can actually still rotate over to the Dragon in order to try to contest it. Um, Senna is already in the area, but she is by herself, so I'm gonna launch a, a uh, ult from downtown and just take her out. Now, I kinda scrolled the thing in the wrong direction there because you know, on the replay, it's sorry, you need to scroll in the opposite direction to scroll in the direction that you want to. Now, if you take a look here, look at that Frozen Gauntlet, um, the, the AoE from the Frozen Gauntlet. It, it happens like very, very often. Like, basically, every Q um, triggers the Frozen Gauntlet. Now, I'm not completely sure if there's a cooldown on that or not, but I don't believe so because it's, it's proccing on every single queue uh, and the, the area while it's not huge like if you build it on a full tank um, uh, with a lot of armor kind of mall fight where it can cover like you know a huge huge area but this is a pretty decent area like it honestly was not as small as I expected it was the, the area that you get from it was bigger than I expected now here at this point in time we have uh, completed our um, mirror mana as it has evolved into the mirror mana and we have the frozen gauntlet as well so we are going to be doing i wouldn't say anywhere near to good kind of damage but we will be doing decent damage because of the mana mute and we at the same time have a lot of utility due to the frozen gauntlet now here i'm just taking the crux i see a fight happening down in mid i'm launching my alt there to help out and at the same time, I'm kiting toward the mid lane to, just in case I need to help. Now, uh, I could have just gone there directly, um, but I chose to just finish up a couple of crowds before I got there. So here, a another fight breaks out. Uh, Darius is caught completely out of position, and unfortunately Lux is gets taunted by the Ramus as well. So it's only me and the Seraphine left. We, of course, cannot 2v5, so we got to, of course, just retreat um, from the fight in general. Um... Seraphine eats a root from the Senna, but it appears the enemy team has split up. So I see Fiora relatively low, so I'm trying to see if I can find her anywhere around because the enemy team has split up into some going to top, some going to bot. So this is a fight that we can actually take if we do actually manage to find the Fiora. Unfortunately, we do not. So um, no, no real big deal there. Alright, so now as you can see, there's not too much to do on the map because everybody is up 
at, on both teams. Baron is coming up, but neither team can really just start Baron uh, just like that. And all of the tier 1 towers have been taken on the side of the enemy team. So it's a little bit difficult to as to what to do now because if we try to push for a tier 2 tower, uh, it's pretty easy to get collapsed upon by the enemy team. So here, Master Yeshi sets down the Rift Herald in the bot lane, which is a pretty bad Rift Herald because the wave is just coming in. So the Rift Herald is not going to crash at all. Now here I'm trying to facilitate the Rift Herald crashing, uh, but two people show up so it's not really very safe for me to be there instead i'm going to rotate over to mid where instead i hope to use the rift trial as a distraction to get the mid lane tower instead sort of like how you like to put rift trial down before dragon um to sort of distract the enemy team now unfortunately um another wave comes in and stops the rift trial in the bot lane in the meantime there are three people in the mid lane to defend now of course fiora is rotating from mid to bot now but there's three people in mid to defend and we cannot really get anything done so here Fiora comes in and the fight sort of um, kind of trickles downward toward the dragon pit area. I don't really quite want to get caught so I just launch an ult and I shift myself away uh, from the fight. Now here the dragon is coming up soon, the infernal dragon. So everybody is just going to back and just going to reset. Uh, Sorella's Grudge acquired by me so full blue build Ezreal for, for now at the moment. Uh, all blue items. So now at this point in time, I sh my slow should be pretty much insane uh, uh, because we got the double slow from, of course, the zone from the Iceburn Gauntlet uh, combined with the icy passive from the Sorello's Grudge. It should be really, really difficult for enemies to reach me. Now even something like Fiora who has a dash that can, of course, reach me, you're still gonna have a difficult time with those slows. You know, I'm launching straight at her face. Alright, so here... Senna gets completely caught out of position, uh, face checking into the dragon area by herself. So we just pretty much destroy her in half a second. And now we can go onto the dragon with a man advantage. And I'm gonna pick up the dragon. Ramus comes rolling in, but too little, too late. Doesn't really find anything except getting the bad news. So here, uh, we're actually picking for Baron because we, we do have uh, um, uh, an a numbers advantage and we and we do have a push in uh, mid lane so here uh, we do want to try to force the Baron if we, if we can now another um, sort of thing about the Iceberg Gauntlet is that it does combo with Seraphine pretty well it just happens to be in this match you know if, if I hit uh, my Q and cause the area if Seraphine just hits a E without having the double charge she will still get the root so that is something pretty sweet now as you can see decent damage onto the Vayne of course Vayne is pretty squishy so uh, yeah Decent damage onto the vein. Alright, so Ramus gets hooked over the wall, uh, and we do actually manage to just finish him off. Now, uh, really nice Seraphine ultimate, and a full on fight just starts breaking out. So, Senna is the. the uh, Senna and Vayne are the last two people standing. Senna, gone, so only really Vayne is left. So, now this gives us an opportunity to just push down mid. Now, as, as I like to say, it, it went. Uh, you get Baron. Basically, the objective of getting Baron is pushing. So if you can push without the Baron, uh, just pushing one without the Baron is, is pretty much even better. So here we get the mid lane inhibitor uh, uh, as a reward for winning the fight. And here we can actually try to end the game. So Vayne is the only one left. Master Yi procs tower aggro for some reason and causes her to die. Causes him to die, I'm sorry. And Seraphine as well at, uh, manages to take the tower aggro and she dies as well. So if we played that situation a lot better, we would have won the game at, at this very point in time. So if Mastery didn't aggro the Vayne unnecessarily and Seraphine didn't end up taking tower aggro somehow, uh, five of us would be able to just force down the base and Vayne, and, you know, she's only single target. At most, um, she kills one person as we're killing the base, but we still win the game regardless, so that wouldn't really matter. But now in this case, uh, we kind of screwed up and two members died. We don't have enough uh, firepower, firepower to kill the base anymore. So we got to just um, back off and the fight, uh, the, not the fight, the match continues. Alright, so here I'm pretty much um, almost to my fourth item which is of course the Bear of the Rune King. So now I'm just going to take the Rit buff because Rit buff obviously going to be useful for me. Another, yet another slow. So Rit buff slow plus uh, Sorelda's slow plus Iceborne Gauntlet slow. Enemies will be able to do absolutely nothing. Alright, as you can see, I hit the Iceborne slow on the Fiora and she, she's running away, she's hightailing it out of there. Uh, if you if they get hit directly by me, the Red Buff slow and the Sorella slow would apply as well. But of course that one was on the minions. Alright, so here I'm getting a ward in on the on the Baron. Uh, unfortunately with the Seraphine out there. 
no, not quite in range. So here we're just pinging for Baron. We have the mid lane push, and we feel relatively confident uh, enough at this point to straight up just go for the Baron. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go for the Baron. Any team is none the wiser. We see a couple of enemies actually backing in the middle, uh, in the in in the middle of the mid lane. So we know that this is relatively gonna be relatively safe and uncontested. So we do actually pick up the Baron. Enemy team probably doesn't even realize that we were doing it. So we do have the Baron for the push now. So we, of course we do want to push top lane and bot lane where, the, where there are no inhibitors. But the Elder Dragon is of course spawning in 30 seconds or so. So we do of course need to contest the Elder Dragon. Um, so we, we do actually complete our fourth item as well. So we're only one item away from full build. I'm just pinging to push of course the lanes that need to be pushed. Now Vayne uh, gets really really greedy for that tier 1 tower and because of that she's getting chased all around town by the Darius. Now she finds herself stuck uh, you know um, with without her team and with all of us in the area. So now this of course means that she is not going to be around for the Elder Dragon fight. So this is the worst thing you could do as not even just the ADC but as any member of, of the team which is to get caught right before the Elder Dragon fight or like a Baron fight or something like that. So because of that, any team doesn't even manage to to, uh, to actually contest the Elder Dragon. So we got all four dragons in this game and pretty much at this point the game is won. Like we had to have made, we, we have to make a major mistake to be able to lose a, a team fight and for the enemy team to come back into the game. Now here, my team pushing down mid, I'm just gonna launch an ult um, down, down, down toward their direction to of course help out a little bit in terms of the damage. But, you know, we can try to pretty much force the end here. I take the, the safe approach, which is to push in the minion wave in the other lane as well. Um, just so that they pretty much have no chance at all. Now here, Fiora tries to go onto me. As you can see, I'm kiting her out a little bit. Nice charm by the Seraphine. Still trying to kite out the Fiora. Kind of does work out. Vayne is uh, part of the picture as well. She kind of gets kited slightly as well you know, with me shifting around and putting down all those slows. And here, we have the game one. So now as usual, I'm going to leave you guys with the stats. You'll see that my damage is still decent, but just not as high as if I just pretty much built straight up damage. So anyways guys, thank you guys for watching the video and goodbye.